turtle. <laughs> Am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? <laughs> Welcome to Cheese, a Healthy Fruit, a podcast where two sisters reminisce on growing up in rural Wisconsin. I'm Sidel. And I'm Jade. And you're <laughs> listening. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know how we want to start this. It has been a while. Like a whole year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we stopped recording in summer. I think it was like um, August the last time that we recorded. Yes. August yeah. of 2021. Mm-hmm. So everything that you've listened to so far, which, you know, we've kind of talked about in some of the episodes, like our uh, biking, fun for dads, not for daughters. We talked about how our dad would probably be turning 52. <sighs> Excuse me. 52 by the time that this actually came out so in fact he is yeah he's 52 <laughs> yes soon. Mm-hmm. actually by the time this is out he's 52 <laughs> yeah he's already 52 so. at this point <laughs> so jade do you have an announcement I do! Well, I have a couple, actually. Yes. I have a kitten. His name is Moose. He's with us today. He's got a vet appointment, so he's going to hang out. He likes biting. That's his favorite thing right now. Yeah. He's just a crazy little dude. Yeah. (laughs) He thinks hands and feet are toys, so. But he's so cute. He's got little belly spots. Yes. Mr. Moose. Hey. Hey. Give me a kiss. Thank you. Okay. You're gonna go right there. A lot has changed in the last year. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I have a whole fiancé now. Yes. (laughs) So. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. He's destroying our barricade. Oh, and then he's licking it to make it okay. Oh. That's what he does. He goes, I'm going to kill it. It's fine. <laughs> ah. Or he's just trying to get the hair off, you know, like they do. Well, he does that with my hand. Yeah, he's trying to take your skin off. Yeah, see, I had some time trying to edit with this little monster in the room with me. Uh, the first day he just sat at my feet and he was nice and he like played with his carrot yeah carlos yes <laughs> but then by the last day that he was here he was running around the whole like up on the desk mm-hmm. and on our cushion barricade yeah thing. and yeah causing terror trying to take down your stuff and cake my hard drive oh yeah he thinks tables are for kittens Uh huh. so the other day I had water sitting on my night table and he sho- shoved his face straight into that and just started drinking out of it and was like nothing is sacred yep <laughs> yeah and then he would go on the ground for a while and like trick me into believing that he was done terrorizing me mm-hmm. and then he'd attack my leg <laughs> yeah yeah He's not quite as bad as, like, Mike with the climbing up the leg thing yet. Mm-hmm. But he's starting to show signs of being like, oh, I can climb your leg. Yeah. So I've been trying to kick him off every time I get. Yeah. He will. Mm-hmm. He'll get there. Yeah. 
Anywho, what's up with you, Miss Adele? It's been a year. I don't have very much new stuff happening. <laughs> Other same old, than same old. <laughs> I've had a bunch of I've had some job changes. I'm going to college. Mm-hmm. In September. Oh. But uh, yeah. I mean, sometimes I look at my life and I'm, I'm like, if I have too much going on, sometimes I just go, eh. That's life. It's true. <laughs> so, shall we get into the story? Yeah. All right. Let's go. So, we mentioned how we have, we live in the country. And we have a lot of wild animals that come around and we interact with. So I'm going to start with a few stories about one species of animal. I was going to say, it's not just one animal. Yes. <laughs> There's multiple. <laughs> that we interacted with mm -hmm. several times. I have almost had a war with this animal. <laughs> well, and don't we have at least one still hanging around? Oh, Currently? yeah. Yeah. No. Um, at least three. Oh, okay. Yeah. But now it is... We'll get into it, but it, it's summer, so mm -hmm. we don't come out during the day. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we are going to talk about possums. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, it all started when Jay had heard a noise coming from our can recycling. Oh my God. We have a barrel that holds all of our aluminum cans, and then we go and recycle them when it's full. But it was probably about a quarter or a third mm, full. I'd say a third. And she looked into the barrel and saw a small possum stuck in there. It was like swimming. Yeah. In the cans. He yeah. couldn't get out. Yeah, because he couldn't climb back up the sides. It's yeah. too slippery. And the cans were also rolling around underneath. Mm. So it was a, a bad situation. It's like a ball pit for a possum. Yeah. <laughs> but she texted dad and I think you, you sent you sent a video to me too. Oh yeah, because it was just like crunching noise and I was like, what the fuck is happening? Mm-hmm. I was going to work. I was like, this is not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> it did end up staying there for, like, the whole day, maybe. Because when Dad got home, he took the can to the edge of the cornfield and tipped it over and mm -hmm. let the possum out. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. But, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was the last that we saw of that guy, maybe. That we know of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next winter, there's one that was coming to our front yard, mm -hmm. and it was climbing on our burning bushes and chewing on them and just destroying them. Yeah. So, I believe that ja Dad chased it away. Mm -hmm. A couple of times, or at least once. But then I did the same later. Mm -hmm. And this is how it went. <laughs> I came out with a shovel, and I tried to scare it away. But what it did was it turned and looked at me with its mouth open, like it just... <laughs> And it just froze. Yeah. And then I would put the <laughs> shovel at it and it wouldn't move. Mm -hmm. Except that if the shovel got close enough to its mouth, it would bite it. <laughs> like just bite it. Mm -hmm. And then go back to just being frozen. Mm -hmm. Just, ch yeah, chomps down and then... <laughs> So, I then tried picking up 
opossum and throwing it. <laughs> Did you have gloves on? <laughs> With the shovel. Oh. Scooping it up like, and it's gonna yes. bite you. Yeah. So I was giving it flight lessons, and that was basically oh. the only way that I could get it to move. Yeah. It was just by me moving it. Mm-hmm. But then I got it over to across the driveway mm-hmm. into a snowbank, and there it sat, mm-hmm. and it just watched us the whole day. <laughs> and we were working at Grandpa's, mm-hmm. so we were kind of going back and forth. Mm-hmm. A little bit. I thought you guys were playing King of the Hill, so it was like, I'm the King of the Hill, and nobody's yeah. challenging me, but I mm-hmm. have to, like, stay here to prove my point. Yeah. And, like, this is, like, classic possum behavior. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't run. Mm-hmm. Their first response, if, I mean, if they can play possum Mm -hmm. they will but they only do that if they see a threat coming before the threat sees them Mm -hmm. but if you're already within a certain space and it knows that you see it it's going to just stop and freeze Mm -hmm. and try to look scary i think that's yeah kind of the goal But that night, I came back from working at Grandpa's, and this possum, it was already, like, nighttime, he had made his way back to the middle of the yard by our bushes, and he watched me the whole way as I walked around. Mm -hmm. So basically, like... The way that our driveway is shaped, it is kind of around the front yard because we have, we have like a check mark that goes to our house, mm-hmm. but then our grandpa lives in the backyard, so the driveway kind of goes out and around in like a, like a square. Almost, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a ninety degree angle there mm-hmm. at that corner. I walked around there, and he just watched me the whole time. (laughs) The whole way around. It was so creepy. This is the creepiest possum I have ever seen in my entire life. Well, it was pissed off because you just threw it multiple times. I know. I know it was a couple hours before this, but you just threw it multiple times, and then it was like, I finally made it back to where I wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm staying. Yeah, it was so creepy. It had, like, glowing red eyes. No. But eventually we got rid of the possum. And one of our burning bushes needed to be replaced. Yeah, it was dead. Yeah. Died. Mm -hmm. Then we kind of had a quiet time for possums. Mm -hmm. For a long time. A few years, you know? Yeah. But this winter, we had a possum that was coming up to our bird feeder Mm -hmm. and eating all the bird seeds that are on the ground. Mm -hmm. And we watched it. We just sat at the dining room table and watched it eat the bird seed. And any time that we came out, Like, it would hide underneath the porch or Mm -hmm. tree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. But, like, if we were inside through that glass, it was like, ah, it... mm -mm. Yeah. Just went about its life. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was probably living in the wetlands. Yeah. Because if it really got going, it would go all the way across the field and stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. So, I... It was like, this possum is really hanging around. We're seeing it every day. We should name I, I thought, we should name it. Mm-hmm. And Dad thought of names like Ellie mm-hmm. or Crash and Eddie. Yeah. From Ice Age. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like they're possums. Yeah. But I wanted to name it a more gender-neutral name. Mm-hmm. 
because we don't know we're not going to check either like we don't know yeah what their Mm -hmm. anatomy is yeah so i decided to name it peyton (laughs) Uh, was peyton with an e or with an a oh i mean i spelled peyton with an o p-a-y-t-o-n yeah okay but anyway, the possum became Peyton. I was talking but... about the first, the first vowel, by the way. Oh. No, it's A. Yeah. So it's either A or E for the first vowel. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. What well, in like A? One's like Peyton Manning. Yeah. But one day I was watching out the window. Uh huh. And I saw two shapes moving in the wetlands Mm -hmm. and i went i think there are two possums they're chilling together Mm -hmm. and then one day i came home and i was in the garage and i saw a possum in the cat cage (laughs) that's not a cat (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So here's what I did. I put on my thick gloves and I went over to the cat cage. And it kind of like it ran behind the water bowls. Yeah. It kind of like kind of clumsily like fell into the water bowl halfway <laughs> and stuff because it was trying to get away from me. Yeah. But it was very much cornered. Yeah. And I picked it up. I had my thick gloves so it wouldn't bite me. Mm-hmm. And I brought it outside. And the whole time that I was carrying it, it just resumed it that freezing posture. Yeah. And I like kind of turned it and looked at it, like it didn't move. <laughs> You're like, hmm, like one of my figurines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have room for you on my shelf right now because oh I have a hoarding God. problem, but... <laughs> I don't have a hoarding problem. You have a lot of figurines. I have a lot of figurines, but that's not a hoarding problem. I'm not going to get rid of my figurines. Okay. They're attached to Grandma. You and glued them to are... Grandma? Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm ah. tired. Oh my god, I just touched your toe a little bit and you freak out. <laughs> <gasps> Sibling contact. <Ugh. laughs> I hate it. That was me when I was 12. I thought it was the cat. <laughs> That's true. He would, like, bite your foot. But yeah. he wouldn't have, like, gently touched it first. He would have just come in and just gone, ah, and gotten you. Yeah, but it could have been his paw, too. No, I still maintain the fact that he would have just attacked you first. He wouldn't have just, like, tapped to see how it is. Like, he would just go, ah, and then, like, okay. start kicking. Whatever. Like, he found Carlos. That's that sound in the background. Uh, the carrot. His kicker toy. But I took the possum to the cornfield mm-hmm. and let it go. Mm-hmm. And I walked away. Oh, it did walk away? Did you have to walk away a little bit first? No, it just went. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I had already done, yeah. <laughs> you already the made freezing. eye contact with it. And and you the were freezing, like, mm. <laughs> the freezing had already not worked. Yeah. So it was time to try um, running. Yeah. But they don't run very fast. Mm-hmm. And that's why they don't run mm-hmm. from predators. So they kind of have like a little waddle. They do. Yeah. So there was another day when I was just. At normal noon activities, sitting at the table. Eating corn dogs. Probably watching <laughs> the possum eat all the bird seed. Because it was at noon when they were coming to eat. But I think it was lunch. Yes. But also, most of us aren't home. Yeah. So they don't get bugged as much. Mm-hmm. Whereas if they come at like two, five, they would. Um, can I interrupt you? The soap smells like strawberries, strawberry pound cake. 
no it smells like a type of cereal it's those strawberry like the things with the frosting on the top yes the, like, wheaties yes yeah yeah it smells like strawberry yeah it smells like strawberry shortcake her but hair it smells like the wheaties oh yeah when she used to have scented hair oh my god the amount of times i put that shit in my mouth <laughs> It smelled good. It did not taste well. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't actually try to eat it, but it was like gum. Me when it, you used to okay. <laughs> gum. Do you want me to talk about your dirty laundry? No, I don't know what you're gonna say. Miss bulb patch. <laughs> Miss, I had a bowl cut. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> so I, I had just gotten that possum out of the cat cage mm-hmm. so what i jack <laughs> someone's here no one is here someone's here the door just did the thingy well i don't know why <laughs> we're going to be attacked hold on this by someone with a chainsaw Oh my god. Well, if they fucking opened the door and then walked in, I'm pretty sure someone with a key. We would have and a it. chainsaw. Oh my god. You're so stinky. That's why we call him stinky. You literally smell like manure. Dad's at home. Oh my goodness, he's come to make all of the noises. It's 1027. Who knows? Speaking of wet mouth noises. Yeah. The poodle makes the best wet mouth noises. <laughs> and is no yeah, key. Dad's going to turn the TV on the first thing he freaking does. Oh, facts. Absolutely. Hopefully it's more uh, Halloween. Yeah. It'll probably be a Western. Well, Fargo. This smells weird. Oh, Bunyan. Where the food, t- food tastes good. Where the food tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> but not too good, eh? Have you been to Paul Bunyan's? Huh? There's one in, one in Monaco and then one in Wisconsin Dells. Yes, I've been to the one in the Dells. Oh my god, it's so fucking amazing. I love, I fucking love Paul Bunyan's. This is a wild tangent. Let's go. Like we ate at Paul Bunyan's, the possum was eating. <laughs> except that it stopped. I yeah. watched that possum because I was like, oh, it's gonna go in the ca- it's gonna go in the garage. Yeah. And sure enough, it walks over to the cat door mm-hmm. and starts looking in it. So I bolt up, I ran outside, mm-hmm. I put my coat on, ran outside, and I came out shouting mm-hmm. to try to scare it away. And I succeeded. It w- it didn't come in the garage. Mm-hmm. And I opened the door, and it had just run around the corner mm-hmm. of the garage. Mm-hmm. Good your licky lick. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for the wet mouth noises. That is the dog licking. He has a tick. He doesn't like a nervous oh. tick. <laughs> Not like a, the he kind of He doesn't have a tick. <laughs> no, he's a poodle, so his brain's a little special. Yeah. He has uh oral fixation yes <laughs> and no teeth so <laughs> yeah <laughs> well he has six teeth actually yeah but i went outside i chased it around the garage and i was like yelling at it and like stomping and like kicking toward it you know to try to scare it away Mm-hmm. But obviously that wasn't quite working. Because yeah. <laughs> they don't run. No, yeah. And so then I tried reaching toward it. Mm-hmm. Acting like I was going to pick it up. Mm-hmm. Oh, bless you. Could you? <laughs> and then it would start walking away. Mm-hmm. And it would get like five feet and then stop. Or a yard, maybe. So did you have to keep chasing it? Yes. <laughs> so I continued to chase it and stuff and it would it would stop and it mm-hmm. would it would assume the freeze pose with its mm-hmm. mouth open until I went and acted like I was reaching for it. Mm-hmm. 
and then it would run a little bit and I chased it all the way I chased it to the field but then it turned and went to the pen and it hid under a tree you know and that was the last time that the opossum was trying to get into the garage. So I learned that possums mm -hmm. are solely food motivated. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. You can't intimidate them into avoiding somewhere, mm -hmm. really. Like, they don't take negative reinforcement. It's no. just food yeah. that they care about. Mm-hmm. And I also learned that they will come out during the day. They are nocturnal. Mm -hmm. But they will come out in the day when food is scarce. Mm -hmm. So in the winter. Yeah, I was going to say that's why we were seeing them in the winter. Yeah. And possums can't get rabies. So Yeah. So I wasn't worried about it biting me mm -hmm. and giving me rabies. And rabies isn't the reason why it was out during the day Yeah, either. It's not like a raccoon when you're like, ooh. Mm hmm Did I ever tell you about the raccoon in Florida that was no. eating the cat food? But you'll probably have to share that at some point. I will. Okay. That was wild. <laughs> it was the most Florida thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the last time that we saw the possums was at sunset. Mm -hmm. Dad and I were in the kitchen. And we saw the possums by the bird feeder. A possum. Mm -hmm. One possum. Mm -hmm. But then another possum. <laughs> Dear Lord. Does he need to go downstairs? Maybe. All right. We've gotten rid of the dog. Yes. <laughs> Put him out of his misery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put him downstairs so he can sit on the couch. <laughs> yeah. So Dan and I saw one opossum, and then a bigger one walked up. <laughs> and the first possum was like, like acted like threatening me, mm -hmm. you know, trying to protect its food. Mm -hmm. And towards you or towards the other possum? Towards the other possum. Oh. We were inside. Oh. So they had no okay. idea we were just watching them. Mm-hmm. But it kind of the big the second one walked mm -hmm. away. Oh, it was respectful. It was Eventually, like, that's your food. I understand. Yeah, you do not share. Joey doesn't share food. But I filmed them mm -hmm. and sent it to you, and I say saying it's Peyton and Peyton. <laughs> 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 then a third possum came up. And this one was about the same size as the first possum. The little one? Yes. Yeah. And then I sent another video saying, there might be three of them. <laughs> <laughs> so all together we had Peyton, Peyton, and Peyton. Peyton. Peyton? Yeah, like really fast. Yeah, but. I don't know. It's Peyton. How are... Peyton. 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 And Peyton. Peyton. <laughs> you just said them all the same way. No, I did not. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, like, that's also the thing, is that we can just call them all Peyton. Yeah, we don't, we, it doesn't matter which one it is, it's all Peyton. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved Peyton. Whereas, like, if we, we could have named them Ellie, Crash, and Eddie. But then we would have to remember which one is which. Yeah. And it's very hard to tell the difference between them, yeah. really, because they're possums. They're possums, yeah. <laughs> it looks like a possum. Yeah. The coats don't change very much. Like no. you, And you can, like, tell that one is lighter mm -hmm. when it's next to another one. Yeah, but if it's by itself, you can't really tell. Yeah. It just looks like a possum. Yeah. But that's my story. Yeah. And we haven't had much... Well, I guess there is we one update. We had a Peyton sighting. Yeah. Because we came home mm -hmm. at night, mm -hmm. and you saw one run under the porch. Yes, one of the Peytons ran under the porch. Yes. So they're still around. Yes. They're oh. definitely, like, hanging around still. Yeah. 
But we haven't seen them as much because it is now summer mm -hmm. and they have resumed their regular possum activity. Yeah. Do possums eat worms? I think so. Yeah. I, they're omnivores, so. Mm hmm. I just can't think of what a possum eats. I saw a giant worm. Ew. Yesterday, I think. One that needs to be cut in half. It was, so it, it was like this, worms? this long. Oh my god, how did that even happen? Like a, like almost a foot long. Or six, at least. Yeah, it was more than six foot long. Any, any, any. Yeah. It was giant. How did that even happen? I don't know. It's the king of the uh, ants. Oh my god, the king of the worms. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Your turn. My turn? Mm-hmm. Okay, so for my, like, short little thingy ending segment there we go um not a euphemism okay my short little thingy uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't think i'm funny so sidel you like scary stories right yes yes you love scary stories <laughs> even though you're fucking afraid of everything yeah <laughs> so this bitch is afraid of the dark but listens to serial your killer fault. things you listen to serial killer podcasts. It's your fault that I'm afraid of the dark. And watch horror movies. You made me afraid of the dark. And you're scared. Psychological so you're scared. To psychological torture from the time that I was born. You were like, let's get a nightlight for the baby because she needs it. She's going to, yeah. You well, I needed it. I just didn't want to pretend like I was afraid of the dark. Okay. Well, don't worry. My fiance and is then dark, you, and I still love her. You taught me to be afraid of the basement. Because he would sacrifice me to the basement demon. Yes. Are you ready for the story? Or are you going to keep explaining how I was a terrible older sibling? I have trauma. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> Why don't you go ahead with a scary story? Okay, so... This is a library book. I went into a physical library and found a library book called... True Ghost Stories, Haunted Heartland, from the American Midwest. So it's a whole bunch of stories from different states in the Midwest. This was by Beth Scott and Michael Norman. So I just, I was looking through it. They have a whole section in Wisconsin. Naturally, it's the last section, so I didn't have to read anything at the beginning of the book. <laughs> I, I had one interest. I didn't give a shit about <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> Or Ellen Waugh, excuse Ellen me. Ellen Waugh. Ellen Waugh. Because people from... Okay, here's why. <laughs> here's why it's Ellen Waugh. Because people from Illinois seem to think that it's pronounced Illinois. Mm -hmm. It's the strangest thing ever. Yeah. But the, the last letters in the... In Illinois... Yes, there we go. Could be pronounced Waugh. Mm-hmm. I think. <laughs> she thinks... <laughs> Don't fight me, I'm correct. So, <laughs> so <that> was mad. <laughs> I don't care if you know more about French than I do. You don't. <laughs> Not in this case. So, so that says, fuck you, I'm right. <laughs> when a fib says, <gasps> <laughs> Illinois, my oh. response will be, Illinois. <laughs> A fib, wow. <laughs> That's what they're Someone called. Someone peed in your cereal, <laughs> my god. I know what they're called, but Jesus <laughs> Christ, we might have listeners. <laughs> from Illinois? Nah. <laughs> Just from Platteville. Shout out to our Platteville listeners. You guys are listening the most. Hey. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. We're still baby podcast. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we have five downloads from Platteville. Nice. So maybe someone, one person from Platteville listened to everything. And listened to them. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, why are you squishing its face? Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I chose a story. Jade bought in me this a book. distraction for my birthday. Yeah, I did. And, and it's I've been mostly it. for her. Yeah. I've been using it a lot. It's a cat. It's a neato cat. Yes. Okay. I am going to read you a story. Mind you, I'm not the best at reading. 
So this is going to be a wild ride for everyone, but it's a short story. I want to read it. It's interesting. Please bear with me. Are you ready, Sadal? Yeah. Buckle in. All right. Is it possible to murder a ghost with a shotgun blast? Or at least scare it enough so that it leaves the house it is haunting permanently? A modest two-story farmhouse a few miles south of Portage was home to August and Patricia Hines in 1925. The Hineses, which is my favorite name, because Hineses, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and their children, seven-year-old Freddie, his older sister Elizabeth, 11, and Charles, age nine, had moved into the house in 1915. During their 10-year occupancy, nothing untoward had happened. All that changed during the summer and fall of 1925. I like how that could be like the intro to a horror movie. Mm -hmm. And then they're just like, and then there's the three kids running around. I'm like, oh, it's terrifying. (laughs) (laughs) Like, ah, children. (gasps) No, don't do that shit. I absolutely hated that movie. Yeah, we didn't finish it. The hide and clap. Is it the con- No, I've seen that one. Yeah, it's The Conjuring, I think. Conjuring 1. Yeah, I think it's the first one. Yeah. I have seen that movie so many times, I still couldn't watch it. I was like, absolutely the fuck not. Okay. Yeah, we didn't- we just didn't finish. Are you ready for the Heinzes again? Yep. Okay. The trauma, which would soon envelop each member of the Heinz family, began ominously in February, when a mysterious fire destroyed one of their barns. Another barn burned in June. The origin of both fires was never discovered. Then, one evening in late June, as the family gathered around the dining table for supper, they heard footsteps descending from the second floor. Each member of the family was at the table. Charles and his father investigated, but found, as expected, no one else about. The footsteps resumed almost as soon as the family regrouped around the table and would continue off and on for the next three months. Yet the most bizarre incidents of the haunted summer centered on a broom Mrs. Hines kept in an enclosed summer kitchen. They had a summer kitchen? What? Oh, well, okay. Okay, so it's the 1920s. Uh-huh. I'm assuming you would have a kitchen that's, like, further from, like, the center of the house for mm-hmm. the summer, so it's, like, less hot. Yeah. And then one that's near the middle, if you could. Yes. During the winter to keep the house warm. Yes. But also, it uh, also summer says, kitchen? Did it say enclosed summer kitchen? Yeah. So it seems like they're normally outside. Like a summer kitchen is outside? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you know. Yeah, no, like, that makes sense. grill outside. Yeah. They probably did most of the cooking outside in the summer for heat. So this is their, like screen porch yeah but in the 1920s <laughs> yeah okay okay i'm caught up the room could be reached only through an outside door okay yeah so it's like a cellar oh it's it's separate yeah 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 it's like a cellar yeah <clears throat> sort of situation yes Ooh, or like castles when they used to have the kitchen not by the castle because the kitchen would burn down like all the time and they were like well if we keep it far enough away from the castle it won't burn the whole castle down it would just burn the <laughs> kitchen down and we could start there yeah that's my favorite fact about old, like, yeah, buildings and stuff, is that they just went, the kitchen is the f- source of most fires, so we're just going to move it over just a little bit <laughs> and hope it doesn't burn down this whole place. Yeah. Okay. Nearly every morning, Miss Hines discovered the broom was missing. Family members usually found the broom stashed in some remote corner of the farm property or else in a different room of the house. Was one of the Hines children up to mischief? Each child steadfastly maintained that they had no connection with the roving broom, and their parents believed them. With the family growing weary of searching for the broom each morning, honestly, I'd be pissed off. I'd be like, I didn't even want to do this tour, and now I have to fucking go play hide-and-seek with a broom before I can fucking sweep the house. (laughs) I'd be sick. (laughs) Be like, I can't sweep today, because Mm -hmm. you know why? The broom is in the barn. Or somewhere else. I don't yeah. care to go find it. Yeah. But then, and then I'd get my ass beat. You might only have to do one chore, you know? Like, was it dad who did that? Yeah, dad, when he was a kid. Mm-hmm. He did his chores at his own pace. 
which was slower than his <laughs> brother's. Yes. So his brother ended up doing most of the chores mm-hmm. because dad stuck to like one or two things and just like did them. Took it took slower. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it didn't take forever, it sounds like. <laughs> it's like the one time when you made a rock out of mud when the rest of us were trying to do things. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I was, I was very good at. I didn't want to. I did not want to help in the garden. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, you were like, I'm gonna find literally anything else to do. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go drink some water. And while I'm doing that, I'm going disappear to disappear for two hours. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> use the bathroom. I'm gonna like do yeah, literally everything that I <laughs> could possibly think about doing <laughs> in order to avoid going back to the garden. Mm-hmm. All right. With the family growing weary of searching for the broom each morning, Mr. Heinz decided to shackle the broom to the wall with a solid chain and lock the summer kitchen door. He really went, I am not buying another fucking broom. (laughs) We are keeping this one broom and I am locking it up. Yeah. (laughs) The next morning, the chain was broken, the broom missing, but the kitchen door was still locked. Mr. Heinz had the only key. The broom was outside in the yard. The final encounter with the thing, as the Heinz children took to calling their unseen guest, started after August Heinz had returned from an, from a hunting trip. A neighbor had been with him, and he stayed for supper with the Heinz family. Soon, the meal was interrupted by footsteps on the staircase. August reluctantly told the visitor about the family's resident ghost. The neighbor thought for a long time and announced that possibly he might scare the ghost out of the house. He picked up his unloaded shotgun, crept toward the stairs, leapt around the corner, and with a wild scream, pulled the trigger. Unexpectedly, a blast shattered a wall, sending pieces of plaster and wallpaper flying all around in all directions. The unloaded shotgun wasn't unloaded. Freddy and young Charles believed they heard a moan after the shotgun discharged. (laughs) And later, nearly everyone in the family heard groans and cries, like those of someone in pain coming from the fruit cellar. We have a fruit cellar? That sounds like your dream. I'm sorry. The the description of this house (laughs) is the most confusing part of this story. (laughs) But they heard groans and cries, like those of someone in pain, coming from the fruit cellar. Could they have killed the ghost? It doesn't seem possible that something already dead could die a second time. But from that night on, the Heinz family was never again plagued with their unbidden visitor. Mm -hmm. I think someone was living in their walls. (laughs) They shot them. (laughs) And that was groans that they heard. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, they had a fucking fruit cellar. I'm sure they had, like, a foot between their walls. Yeah. Someone could sneak around in there. Yeah. Like a mongoose. (gasps) Yes! Oh, my God. Uh, Jeff the talking mongoose. Yes. Oh, fucking love that. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think that was scary? Enough for Haunted Heartland? Yes. It's the twice dead ghost. Yes, is that story. The twice dead ghost. Mm-hmm. Uh, so visit your local right. libraries. You're gonna find some interesting shit. Yeah, I found some very interesting shit. They had some, actually, it was a small town library that we went to, like tiny, tiny, beautiful though. They'd just like gotten a grant to build it, so it was very like pristine. There were windows everywhere. I was like. Oh, gorgeous here but they had some like lgbtq stuff in there Mm. they had some witchcraft stuff i was like okay small town wisconsin what (laughs) the hell there was actually also stuff about um like islam and judaism and all sorts of like other like belief systems for very like conservative white christian area and i was like Mm -hmm. okay we're educating the people 
if they read the book, that is. <laughs> yeah. It's there, at least. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Sidel, do you have anything for us? No, I think that's it. That's it? Yep. Okay, I think we both need to go take naps. Yeah. Because it is tiring. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, actually, I'm going to make you uh, listen to uh, an episode after this, so. Yeah. All right. Let's get to it. Okay. Thanks for listening to Choose a Healthy Fruit. See you next time. Bye. Bye Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Cheese, a Healthy Fruit. Our cover art is by MJ Hennessy. Our theme song is by Melina Marchese. You can find her at melinamarchese.com. Follow the podcast on Instagram at cheese underscore a healthy fruit, Jade at Jade Powers with an extra S, and Sidil at Sidel Powers, spelled C-Y-D-E-L. If you have any questions or want to submit a story from your childhood, email us at cheeseahealthyfruit at gmail.com. Sources can be found in the show notes. You can find Cheese a Healthy Fruit wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Subscribe to Cheese a Healthy Fruit and leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcasting app. See you next time. Bye-bye.